So the idea is to give you just a very quick rundown over what the tool is indeed. So for those of you that have been here last year, we've already had a presentation on that. Uh, but just as a quick explanation, it's a new open source tool that is new in a sense that it has been released quite a while ago already, but it hasn't been used operationally too much. We kind of went for an MVP before, and now we are fleshing it out with all the features that we need to run it operationally, basically. So uh, it, it, uh, the tool is meant to serve uh, multiple purposes. Basically, we wanted to have a contact library for the uh, uh, various C-certs out there where we can find out who we need to contact. We wanted to be able to look up constituency information. If we're seeing an IP address, then we want to find out who's the responsible cert for that. We wanted to be able to, inter uh, to orchestrate the interconnections of our various different tools, such as MISP and other tools. We wanted to be able to uh, manage our local tools. Very often, uh, uh, we have multiple instances of the various tools that we use within our cert. And managing those can be a bit of a hassle, logging into each of the individual instances, managing them is painful, so we wanted to get rid of that. Something else, and this is coming more from a MISP perspective, um, um, one of the trickiest things to deal with are large distribution uh, groups, so sharing groups, and managing those across distributed networks. And we wanted to have a central lookup system for each community where the various different tools can get those distribution lists. We also wanted to have a tool that allowed us to have a community-centric cryptographic uh, key lookup differently to a normal, say, PGP key server. We wanted the associations of these keys to carry over to organizations rather than individual email addresses. That means I want to be able to check whether uh, a signed uh, package comes from a uh, member of a given organization rather than just associating it to a person. So again, these are very community-centric services that we wanted to basically build on top of the other tooling that we have. And also, finally, that is not so much our use case as Circle, but we've built this uh, as part of a project called Melicertus for the European CSERT network. Um, it, was, it, it also has the features to uh, serve as your central node for managing your access control via uh, an IAM system that is uh, connected to Cerebet. So in, in that case, we use Keycloak, but you can use anything with OIDC um, uh, integration. So basically, uh, our MISP communities, when, uh, when we started out back in the day, when we started with MISP a decade ago, were really tiny, so we didn't really have the need to manage large, complex communities. Most of these communities acted as islands, so we had a community for, say, national certs, where we exchanged information, and we had some for military organizations, private sector, and so on, separately. And these were all in all sign laws. Uh, usually it was a single instance uh, setup, and it was easy to manage. Nowadays it's no longer the case, though. So we're dealing with a lot of requests for interconnection, uh, organization management requests, enrollment requests, and these take time for administrators and basically our, uh, our team. So we want to avoid having to do this and wanted to have a more self-service or more single point of, uh, of truth uh, system that handles this for us. Uh, and again, if, if you're coming from MISP background and you've uh, followed our advice of building a large landscape of MISPs for individual tasks, <laughs> then you end up having to manage those MISP instances and that can indeed be tedious and it's also kind of biting us in the ass. So we wanted to solve that. Here's a small example of one of these setups that we're currently building out for, uh, for some of the use cases at uh, Circle. We basically have a set of internal MISP instances that deal with our internal use cases, so incident handling and so on. We have an aggregator MISP where we're collecting information from various different other MISPs that, that we uh, host uh, for internal use so that we have them in one place and so that we can interact with them. We also have separate MISPs for various different constituencies, for the Luxembourgish community, for uh, the private sector community, for the CERT community, and these all have their own data sets and their own rules, but we still manage all of those ourselves. So that means that these are completely disparate instances that we still need to manage. So we wanted to bring this all into one umbrella and be able to manage them from one place and to manage the interactions between them from one place. And again, uh, this also goes, to, uh, goes further with all the other communities that are connected to these constituency instances that all have their own sharing groups, 
their own organizations. So we wanted to have kind of like a phone book for our entire constituency and be able to manage these connections. So some statistics about one of the instances from that list from before. So this is our private sector instance. Again, these instances can be rather large. So this is a MISP community with 1,671 local organizations. That's a lot of folks and a lot of cats to herd. Uh, so it's, it's quite a, a bit of effort managing it currently. So uh, again, uh, uh, we've gone through this. Uh, one of the other things that I didn't mention before was uh, that not only do we have the issue of managing these different communities, but very often these communities have their information in very different formats. So we're part of, for ex of say, FIRST. We're also part of the CSERT network. And these all have their own constituency informations and their own, own, own register informations about the organizations and individuals that are contained in the community. And one of the things we wanted to do is to be able to to have a community-centric modeling of these data structures to be able to host all this information in one place. Here's a small example of what this looks like in Cerebrate. So here we see uh, the circle organization. And you can see below, we have an additional list on top of what you would normally see in MISP with the metadata coming from the different sources of, of, of truth, basically. So the uh, ANISA CSERT network and the CSERT constituency libraries. Or we could also add the first one and so on. So basically, we wanted to have a more extensible uh, way of keeping this information. So you were, have a lot of flexibility, both in terms of storing this information, searching for this information, finding, for example, IP ranges that match an organization, AES uh, that match an organization, and so on and so forth. So again, here's an example of, uh, of a more extended view of, uh, of, of what these meta informations would look like per the different library that is associated to an organization. And, and again, the interesting thing with that is that depending on the community that you're part of, you might be more interested in different uh, data sets by default. So here we see an example. It looks like the MISP uh, organization view, with the difference that the columns are here actually changed based on what is relevant for us as a CSERT, for example. We're more interested in the IP ranges associated to an organization than some of the other metadata. So we've made those uh, first-class citizen. And this is up to each community to do it themselves and decide what's important to them. The other thing, and this is going back to local tools, so these are tools that are connected to your Cerebrate instance, for example, MISP, for example, anything else that you build a connector for. You can also manage these and build your own connectors. So there's a library of examples and skeleton code as well as the MISP code base that you can use as inspiration. The idea is you want to be able to configure the tools, you want to be able to push and pull organization, individual sharing group information to the various tools. We want to be able to diagnose um, uh, uh, our connected tools and MISP instances, for example, manage users, and also build custom actions. So for a, if a, your tool needs any other recurring tasks, you can build actions for that with the connector and, and just trigger the API from a single user interface. So again, the idea is to really ease this whole community management and tool interaction part uh, of your uh, internal uh, tooling landscape. So here is an example of uh, of us having a Cerebrate node with connected MISP instances that we can directly manage from there. A little bit about the development uh, since last year. So we've had six releases over the year. Uh, almost 400 commits, and, it, and there's an, a lot of ongoing work on both the community management aspect as well as the orchestration aspect, so the tooling aspect of the tool. A lot of the fixes and improvements come from uh, ANISA and the CSERT network, so uh, big shout out to them for providing us with feedback, with ideas on how to improve the tool and for doing a lot of testing in the pilot uh, of, the, of the tool. Uh, so there is still a lot coming and we're getting a lot of good feedback from them. Uh, something that has popped up since last year, if you've seen the, uh, the presentation last year, basically we have now um, um, uh, more customizable permissions that you can push to your IAM system. So if you want to manage access to other services from Cerebrate, that is now much more easily doable. So for example, in the case of the CSERT network, everything from mailing lists to tool access and so on can be managed from a single point. And you can also assign these management rights to, uh, uh, to the organizations themselves for self-management, which makes it a lot easier. Also, uh, something that has changed a lot and that has gone through quite a bit of work is the meta uh, information. And um, that goes into these organizations and so on. So nowadays we have versioning for it. We have tools that upgrade the version uh, of the data uh, to newer formats and so on. 
There is also a, a lot of uh, of uh, changes coming up in the next few days in a in release. We have a new UI for managing your tools. So now you have a graphical interface that allows you to see and manage all the different tools that are connected. It will also show you issues with misconfigurations, diagnostics, and so on, as well as be able to trigger changes directly from there. So here's a small example. Uh, this is our Cerebrate that sees our local scope that is at the top box there where we see that we have two MISP instances connected. One is currently offline. One shows some issues with some misconfigurations with low memory allocations and so on. And we see that we're connected to some other Cerebrate nodes that are hosted at other organizations where we can request access to their tools through Cerebrate and so on and so forth. So here's an example of, uh, of the MISP connector where we connect to one of our MISP instances and we can mon uh, manage the organizations of the MISP instance, for example, or the sharing groups, see what needs updating, push updates or pull updates from the MISP instance uh, for all the contact database data. So a little bit about the roadmap itself. So we have this fleet management release coming up uh, with all the MISP management features, as well as a rework of the sharing groups, how they work. We want this tool to be the central point for every community to manage sharing groups. So if you're running a MISP community, this should go a long way in ensuring a, a, a sharing group distribution. We also uh, are going to be working more on the signing validation uh, part, especially in junction with MISP. So we have this protected mode thing that I also mentioned yesterday in MISP that allows you to cryptographically sign data to protect it from data tampering. We want to be able to uh, propagate the keys across the community uh, through Cerebrate itself. Now, besides that, we're also working on a bunch of different integrations. So if you're interested in the entire topic, please jump on board. Get, uh, get uh, download the tool from GitHub, get started with it. And if you see any changes that you want to make, well, it's open source, so get started with that too. That's about it. So if you have any questions, thank you.